Hi everyone. Good day. I hope all is well. I'm here with a week in review of this week's news headlines. It's no different. And of course, I got to start off with COVID, right? Yeah. So, according to the John Hopkins website, coronavirus.jhu.edu, we have 165,874 and one cases of COVID-19. So that's 165,874,001 cases of COVID around the world. The global death toll is 3.4 million. So it's 3,4338, no, 338,383 cases of COVID. The U.S. confirmed cases is 33 million. 84,872. Unfortunately, Joseph, it is not. We're still in the midst of a pandemic and we're about to see a second wave. No, a fourth wave between the end of the summer and to September. So don't be shocked. Everybody getting vaccinated, but doesn't mean we're still not out of the clear because the pandemic has not been declared over. The U.S. death toll is 589,222. So once again, the U.S. confirmed cases of 33,084,872 I mean, cases of COVID. And that's confirmed cases. So, and then we have 589,222 deaths. In terms of vaccinations, there's over 200 million Americans vaccinated. But according to the percentage percentages, that's from different news sources such as NBC News, it's only... 35% of the country that's fully vaccinated. 47% received the first dose, but only 35% of the country is vaccinated. And as much as places are opening up and starting to loosen restrictions, we're still in the midst of a pandemic. There are certain businesses in the city and all businesses throughout the United States of America require you to wear your mask. So we're not out of the clear yet. I still wear my double mask. I just received my first dose nearly a month ago and I will receive my second dose next Thursday. However, when I'm fully, I'm full, I'll be fully vaxxed before the summer hits, I am still wearing my mask because only 35% of the country is fully vaccinated. We're not at a place of herd immunity. We have to be 70% of the country has to be vaccinated in order to reach a place of herd immunity. Herd immunity. And there's still a lot of skepticism about the vaccine. So don't. The pandemic is not over. If that's the answer you guys are looking for. And no. I believe you should still be wearing your mask. And also no. Businesses require you to wear your mask. So yeah. But the CDC is loosening restrictions too early in my opinion about um if you're fully vaccinated you can wear your mask off outside and you can wear your mask off in an indoor setting in a restaurant so here's the, my take on this and it may be you know a little much only 35 percent of the country as i said is fully vaccinated only 35% fully vaccinated. I don't think it's a wise choice. And the CDC wants hope. And I understand you guys don't want to hear about why people have to still wear a mask. But the truth is the truth. We're not a place at herd immunity. People are still skeptical, as I said, taking the vaccine. Some people say they're not taking the vaccine. One of my mom's friends refuses to take the vaccine and she's almost 60 years old. My mother is over 65 and my mother just received her first shot. I mean, we're not at a place where we can take off our mask we're not you can probably eat dinner with a little bit of more people but it should, should be socially distant hand washing 
and all that jazz. I, me, I am not gathering with a whole bunch of people. My gathering is 10 and less. And yes, I wear two masks outside. And I will continue to wear two masks outside. Even if it be hot as hell and humid as hell in New York City, I will continue to wear my mask because I live in a city with damn near 9 million people. And if half of these people in this city is not vaccinated, not even 5 million is vaccinated, I will not be wear, I will not be taking off this mask. And even if 5 million people are vaccinated, I still am not taking off my fucking mask until we get at a place of her immunity. And I'm with you, Kyle. I don't trust people. Hey, chocolate girl. I don't trust people. And hi to everyone that came on this live. I don't trust a damn soul. And I live around Trumpers on the Upper West Side. And some of them want to walk around without their mask on and then breathe on people and talk to you. No, get the hell away from me. Yes, you got vaccinated, but I, I, I'm vaccinated and I still wear my mask. Because I care about the people that I love, that I go visit from time to time. When I have the ability to visit them. Yep, let us wear a mask and leave us the f*** alone. I got a nice stylish mask from Old Navy. Old Navy had a mask on sale today for a dollar. Well, I bought a couple to give Christmas gifts because I have a shit tons of masks. I got nice stylish masks. Y'all see my pictures with my floral mask. I, I'm wearing an army fatigue suit tomorrow, so I'll probably wear like some type of brownish mask to go with it with some sandals. And then Sunday, got a floral dress, and I'll be wearing something a floral dress. I'm not fucking around with this virus. This virus killed too many people that I knew. It killed old neighbors. It killed some pastors I knew. It even killed some family members of mine. And a former colleague of mine who had COVID, it now has asthma on top of her diabetes. So, yeah, no. I'm keeping my mask on. But in terms of, and I'm almost finished with this COVID thing. Hi, Kay. Megan McCain. Yes, I watched The View. And I watched The View because I like to hear different sides and different views or point of views. That's like sometimes I'll watch Fox News every now and then one stupid shit they got to say. But um, she keeps blaming Dr. Fauci for the reason why COVID is a bungle mess and the messaging behind COVID and the vaccine is bad. Let me school Megan McCain a little something on my point of view. Megan, the president of your party, the former guy of your party, knew about the severity of this pandemic. He knew. There's recorded conversations with him and Bob Woodward. He knew. And what did he do? absolutely nothing right away it took for several of states to do lock lockdowns california washington state oregon new york new jersey connecticut and so forth and so on to lock down their states So that's one. Two, he said this virus before a, a national lockdown, no, not a national lockdown, um, you know, a national response and a national state of emergency that he declared. He said that um, this virus is like the flu. It will go away. This recorded video of that. And then during the height of a pandemic when 800 people in New York was dying. He decided not to visit us, even though his borough where he grew up at was the most infected. And he also told people to drink bleach on national television. And then started having super spreader rallies, telling people to take off your masks, Getting upset because he's being pressed about his bungling response of COVID. End up 
catching COVID, him and his wife. He had to get to a, uh, an emergency hospital, the um, Walter Reed Medical Center, because they didn't know he was going to make it. He got the therapeutic drug that other people should have got and still proceeded to have a super spreader rally. So when Megan attacks the nation's leading health expert, when she goes after Anthony Fauci of South Brooklyn, she might not want to do that. I mean, she got dragged by Dr. Ben Gupta out of all people. Oh, yep, and affected, infected the whole entire White House, even the young staffers. So let me just sum this up for um, the princess of Arizona. So Meghan Marguerite McCain, let me tell you something. You add no value to the show that you're on. The only reason why you got that show because you're John McCain's daughter. You only had one job in politics and you wasn't even there for that long because you got shut down by Nicole Wallace and Steve Schmidt. And that's why you got problems with them. All you do and all have you have done and all you have accomplished is being a nonsense, spoiled brat talking head, if that makes sense. So I would like to tell Miss McCain, and this applies to Mr. McCain, Mr. Megan McCain as well, a.k.a. Ben. You guys add no value to nothing. You guys don't know nothing, and you guys are not about nothing. All you are are your family legacies. You guys have no knowledge of what the fuck you're talking about. You don't do your research, and you guys are not worth people's time. So my advice is stop wasting people's time in media and actually go and raise your family on your farm in Virginia. After all, you guys are McCain's. So enough of that. I want to get into now the actual politics of things. So what is going on with the fucking Senate? They're taking a three week break. I don't know if that was on schedule. I don't know whoever managed the schedule, but it's time to pass this George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. We should not be negotiating this bill that already passed in the, in, in the House with Tim Scott and Joseph Manchin III. We don't need to. It's not worth our time. Because Republicans, at the end of the day, they're always going to vote no. If we take away the... Um, qualified immunity, they will still vote no. Because why? Because it's a D attached to that bill. Because that bill is named after a black man, they're not going to pass it. As long as Chuck Schumer is the leader of that Senate, it's going to be no. So why waste time negotiating with Timothy Eugene Scott and Joseph Manchin III, even though Joseph Manchin III is part of the Democratic Party. You need to let him know if you don't pass that bill, you're going to get a rude awakening when you go home. Because when he goes home to redneck West Virginia, there will be some black people and even some white people will approach that ass real quick. Yeah, real quick. And knowing how Joseph is, Joseph don't like to be approached. Joseph don't like um, hard questions. But if you don't go along with your party vote, it will be a problem. So I would advise Joseph to actually um, follow suit. And that's what Democrats negotiating with Timothy Eugene Scott. Don't waste your fucking time. Don't waste your time. And yes, we all want to kill the filibuster, but there's no votes of killing the filibuster. So that's even kind of a way and a dead issue. The president can override that, but that's impossible. Why go on, Queen Lion? But that's impossible. So the Senate needs to act like they're in power and needs to do what they need to do.
In terms of listening to political analysts, don't even bother because they're stupid too on TV. But I'm just saying is um it's time to put Joseph Manchin in place. Even though cinema, she gets on my nerves too. But when it comes to civil rights, she, at least her head is it's it's in the game. It's Joseph. It's Joseph Manchin. And he needs to get his shit together. But in terms of more legislation, the security bill passed through the um, House of Representatives. Oh, that's last with Ms. Gabbard. But um, the bill, I think I read it last night, but I'll just read some of it again. Ugh. So the House on Thursday passed a $1.9 billion, I said trillion, yes, a $1.9 billion to upgrade the capital security in the wake of the January 6th mob attack in a tight 213 to 214, no, 212 vote with the, bare, with the bill nearly passing down because of the opposition of the, of the liberal Democrats called the squad. So who voted against this bill was actually Ayanna Presley. Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Cori Bush, and Jamal Bowen. Shockingly, Midori Jones voted for the bill. And Jaya Paul. Well, Jaya Paul normally acts on her own. She don't act with the squad. Nine times out of ten. But, my thing, and where I'm pissed at, you make an Instagram video, right? You make an Instagram video stating how your experience was and how traumatic it was for you when you were at um, the Capitol that day, certifying the election. You had numerous of interviews how they were looking for you. But you voted against the bill. How the fuck does that make sense? That doesn't make any sense. The mob that Donald Trump sent was going to kill the vice president, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Grassley, because Chuck Grassley's fourth in line. The whole entire succession up to Mike Pompeo and even some members of the congressional body, including Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. And I'm pretty sure other members of the squad too, Ilhan, Rashida, and even somewhat Ayana, right? And yes, Republicans voted against it too. I expect them to vote against it because they will do anything, but the six progressive Democrats I'm focusing on, and the reason why I'm getting on them is because y'all lives was in danger, especially Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. They were going to kill you. And Nancy Pelosi. And you say it was too much money? Too much money? Our communities are being attacked? There's a Justice and Policing Act that was passed through the House of Representatives. This is a total different bill to protect you guys going to work. I don't get it. But let me just say this, and I'm going to nip this in the butt. This is why these progressives need to be primaried next year. They don't serve no purpose in Congress. They haven't passed any laws in the, in the House. Their bills that they're proposing is a pie in the sky. 
None of the shit that they're talking about is not going to be enacted. You have to get other people in Congress on your side of the aisle in the fold. And they have not successfully done that. You have to talk to other people in your caucus, and not just the progressive caucus, but in your full caucus to support you and support your legislation. Of course, there will be civil disagreements. But when you don't invite people to the fold, it causes you to not get things successfully done. Taking credit for other people's bills is whack as fuck. Because that's what the Republicans are doing with the uh, American Rescue Plan. But back to these progressives. You guys don't serve no purpose in Congress. And I'm sorry, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm sorry to, 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 to be mean, but you guys don't. Because if you served any purpose in Congress, you would have voted for this bill. You would have. You also would have had some legislation under your belt that was enacted on your record. And you guys don't. Y'all could talk all this shit about Nancy Pelosi, Jim Clyburn. Let's see. Uh, who else they talk about? They talk about other people in Congress. But guess what? They have bills enacted in their name. I mean, under their belt. They do. And yes, they talk shit about the president and the vice president. But guess what? They accomplished a lot in their tenure. The vice president um, was a co-sponsor of a lot of bills. And she has seven pieces of legislation enacted under her name in her three-year tenure. Her very short tenure in the Senate. And the president, don't get me started on the president. Because the president was in the Senate for 36 years and had 44 pieces of legislation passed. So each year he was passing legislation. And yes, his legislative record, according to the bills that he is enacted... Under his record, he's the most progressive one. He's more progressive than Bernie Sanders. Yes, I said it. So, to the fan base of the progressive movement, this is for y'all. Y'all faves are useless. They don't do shit in Congress, but tweet all motherfucking day and be on TV complaining about the Democratic caucus. The very same caucus that they are part of the last time I checked. Getting a paycheck that they don't deserve. They don't. Now, 174000 a year, they don't deserve that shit. Because they don't do shit. They haven't enacted no bills under their record. So to the fan base, once again, if you don't like this message, you can kiss my ass because I tell the truth all day, every day, 20 motherfucking four seven. <laughs> now with the whole thing with Israel. I don't know too much about, you know, the situation right now, what's going on in Israel. But what I do know from the past, um, it's always been problems in the Middle East. It got worse during the 19, was it 1945? I think after the Holocaust. And it seems like everybody tried to get their hand in the problems in the Middle East, but it somehow it doesn't seem it's never really successful. I mean, President Obama tried his best with Israel. And, of course, he got flack from it from news commentators to different, you know, Republican diplomats and, 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 and whatnot. And um, he tried to find peace. When Donald Trump came to office, he was giving him praise the way he handled Israel. My thing about that is um, he actually made problems worse. Because the embassy was moved to Jerusalem. He's also friends with a crook. Uh, which is, I guess, the Prime Minister of Israel. Um, Bibi um, Natan. Natanu. Oh my God, I keep messing up his name. And pretty much is... Shit just got worse. 
And BB is actually a whole crooked criminal. He was indicted on charges. What happened to that? I always mess up his name. I always mess up his name, Kyle. But the whole thing of, of this is people are blaming the president for the problems in the Middle East, which even though is now under his watch, but those problems been existed before he got there. BB is a conservative. Yes, he is conservative. And um, he wants to start more wars. He's just a prejudiced motherfucker. So when Megan gets on TV, because yes, I'm very back to her because she talks the most shit about the president's diplomacy, which the president's diplomacy is he's actually more of a diplomat than Donald Trump and even someone like President Obama almost. So it's just like she needs to shut the fuck up. And also Stop saying you sympathize with, with the Israelites and with the people in Israel and the Jewish people in Israel because you don't. You think BB's not a crook? So why he got indicted on charges? I mean, there was always problems in the Middle East. And and, and, and that's another thing. The United States involving themselves in that from way before and causing problems with that is just like... Because I think the United States caused kind of like more problems with that. But like I said, I don't really know too much about all those issues in Israel and everything. But what I do know is... BB is, is terrible. And the people of Israel really don't like him. So. Or the Palestinians. They don't like him. As far as I know. And I know he was indicted on some charges. And he was buddy buddy with Donald Trump. That's telling. Yeah. But. Anyhow. I'm going to get. I think there's some trolls here. Trying to block the facts. What are you talking about? Yeah, I heard that too. That's that's true. <laughs> okay, guys, no fighting, guys. No fighting, please. I don't want any fighting. That is the least thing. But I am about to move on. Because I am just about done. This is what happens when you write all your stuff down. When you write all your topics down. Look at this. I feel like I got sloppy handwriting. But, yeah. So. Okay. It's time to read Miss Gabbard. So. I've been waiting to do this. Every time when she trends, she always trends for something fucking stupid and deplorable and racist and bigoted as fuck. So, Miss Gabbard, boy, oh boy. So, Miss Gabbard, I don't know where she get this motherfucking information from. She's days late, but we have to read this. And I might have to read this again to officially read her. And this read is going to be just as worse as I read her in August of last year. Mayor Lightfoot blatantly, wait, let me read that again. Mayor Lightfoot's blatant anti-white racism is abhorrent. I call upon President Biden Kamala Harris and other leaders of our, count, our county country, 
of all races to join me in calling for Mayor Lightfoot's resignation. Our leaders must condemn all racism, including anti-white. I'm going to read that again. And I think I should use Telsey's voice. Mayor Lightfoot blank, blank race, anti-white racism is abhorrent. I call upon President Biden, Kamala Harris, and other leaders of our county of all races to join me in calling for Mayor Lightfoot's resignation. Our leaders must condemn all racism, including anti-white. Okay, let me just stop being a fucking bitch. Let me just read it again. Yes, I'm going to read it for the third time. Mayor Lightfoot's blatant anti-white racism is abhorrent. I call upon President Biden, Kamala Harris, and other leaders of our part, of our country, our county, which he's supposed to say country, of all races to join me in calling the mayor in call in, in calling for Mayor Lightfoot's resignation. Our leaders must condemn all racism, including anti-white. <laughs> I said this to her, but I got to do the full read. Dear Russian bot Tulsi Gabbard, I said, it's President, Vice President Kamala Harris. If you can't say that, it's Vice President Harris or Madam Vice President, not Kamala. She ain't your homegirl. And guess what? Miss Gabbard. If you're listening out there, Tulsi Gabbard, this message is for you. So, Ms. Gabbard, number one, it's Vice President Kamala Harris, Vice President Kamala Davy Harris, Vice President Harris. If you can't say those two things, it's Madam Vice President or MVP, not Kamala Harris. She ain't your homegirl and she ain't your best friend. So that's one. Two, Miss Gabbard. Mayor Lightfoot is not a racist. She prefers to interview with people that look like her and of her skin origin. She does give equal opportunity to white reporters. This whole thing of anti-white, it's another thing of you, Miss Gabbard, of touting your racism and your bigotry. After all, you are a whole entire motherfucking bigot and a whole Russian bot. You are. You was exposed by Hillary Clinton. And she didn't even say your name. But everybody knew it was you. And you even knew it was you. You tried to kneecap then Senator Kamala Harris. Then you got red about two months later. And when she dropped out of the race, your ass was not back on the debate stage. Because why? Because you were an unserious candidate and you were just there to disrupt and cause dissension. And now that you're unemployed, yes, you're unemployed, all you're doing is tweeting bullshit like that. Message that white men tweeted. After all, white men did support your campaign. So, Ms. Gabbard, instead of being a Twitter finger ass Russian bot and a propagandist, try getting a job at Fox News. After all, that's the only news station you appear on because nobody in other networks such as CNN and MSNBC will take you seriously. Because why? Because you're an unserious ass woman. And yes, I said it. So, until then, I will say bye, Felicia, but deuces, ho. Deuces. But I am going to extend this read even further because I enjoy reading Miss Gabbard all day, every day, because I think she's an unserious ass fucking fool. She will never get a podcast, in my opinion. I think her podcast will be full of shit. I think she's full of shit. I think she is. And for Bernie Bros, yes, and it's the Bernie Bros that um, cheered her on when she tried to kneecap then Senator Kamala Harris. Now feel stupid 
that she partnered with a Republican congressman to, uh, what is it? To propose a bill that is anti-trans. But Chow was praising her during the primaries. She also bamboozled y'all, but she took an interview with David Rubin. Tulsi Gabbard is a cosplay Democrat. She's really a Republican at heart. I can't even say moderate Republican. More of a conservative, far-right Republican. An extremist, a propagandist, all of that shit. She never reached more than, what, 5% in a, in a poll? Never. And from what I'm reading on my um, Instagram live, her favorable rating was only 39%. So I'm glad that Kai is in her position because Kai seems like he's doing a damn thing. And post, and post her um, tenure in Congress, she's been tweeting nothing but QAnon conspiracy theories. I guess that's enriched in her soul somewhere. Or from her dirty ass husband because her husband looked dirty. Her husband looked like a bohemian bum. Like he get up out of the bed and just walk. And I know people in Hawaii is clean. I know they are. They wash their ass. Her husband don't look like he washed his ass. I saw a picture of him. Almost looking like Meghan McCain's husband. Bob the Builder. But the difference is Meghan McCain's husband actually look like he's actually clean. He just aged so old because he's so evil. But Tulsi's husband look like he's dirty. He looks dirty. Let me stop dragging her husband because I shouldn't bring her husband because her husband didn't do shit to me. But back to Tulsi. Tulsi, you ain't shit. You never was shit. You ain't gonna be shit. And you will just disappear. You will fade into the dust. You will never be taken seriously seriously because you're an unserious person. So until then, bye ho. Goodbye ho. But as I end this, and I'm going to continue to keep dragging these folks. To the Rose Twitter Caucus. The Bernie Bros. The disgruntled socialists. This is for y'all. Joe Biden doesn't give a fuck about your feelings. Well, President Biden don't give a fuck about your feelings. Vice President Harris don't even know y'all. And your faves and progressives, I mean, your faves in Congress, the progressives, they're going to do what they want to do. They are. So, I'm going to just sum this up because I twisted all my words, but to the world, to the caucus, President Biden, Vice President Harris, and your faves in Congress, don't give a fuck about your feelings. They're there to do a job. And as ineffective as these six progressives who voted against the security bill, they're there to do a job by their constituents. You guys are just some online um, supporters that don't live in their district. And to Rihanna Gray, Marianne Wilson, and Susan Sarandon, you guys will be irrelevant very soon. And I'm predicting three to six months. I'm being nice. I'm, 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 I'm predicting till September or October. Because all you guys do is spew propaganda. You're trying to still keep your main followers, but you guys are losing followers every day. Nick, the um, Fred Hampton Socialist, Realizing his followers are, uh, what is it? Bots. And, um, what else? Um, you can't get a girl to love you like how we love Joe Biden. Because nobody wants to date you. I mean, look how you look. You're not even that cute. And I talked to a mixed martial artist. He fine as hell. 
and he doesn't act like a, a, a straight up dick and a troll like you. Maybe you should work on your personality a lot. Maybe you'll shine through. That's my word of advice. And to Ryan Knight. Joe Biden don't, President Biden don't know you. It's okay. I know you need a hug, but is your boyfriend hugging you enough? I don't know. Maybe trouble in paradise. But yeah, you progressives, you guys ain't shit. You ain't going to be shit as long as you um, continue to be despicable. You won't be shit. But until then, folks, you have a great weekend. Remember to wear your mask. Remember to dress cool. If you live on the East Coast, it's going to be a hot one. I live in New York City. From Boston to Washington, D.C., and maybe in the South, it's going to be hot. But you still got to wear your mask. Wear something that is cool. And if you are over a size six, women, wear a shaper under that dress. And if you are a heavy titty one like me, I am a double D, wear a bra. And if you are a cup or a B cup, wear nipple pasties. They're $5 in the store. Nobody doesn't need to see your nipples. No one. I seen too many nipples today. And I'm like, you know it's pointy, right? And, and I shouldn't be looking, but you know, we women, we got to dress right. No matter what your lifestyle is. People that you talk to, they don't want to see that shit. It's never good to show everybody the, the imagination. Let them imagine. Because that's how you get them. And that's how you, you keep somebody with you. Whether you date men or women, trans women, trans men, you want them to imagine what you look like underneath your clothes. You do. I always put a shaper on when I wear a dress. Yes, I'm a size 14, but I got ass. And under my shapers, when I wear a dress, I wear a cheeker or a thong. I shouldn't be saying that, but I have to let everyone know because I just seen too many people not wearing the right shapers under your, your clothing. It's important to, you know, make sure your clothing is presentable. Whether you're wearing a halter top or not, even when you wear a halter top, you need to wear nipple pasties. If you are a A cup or a B cup, when you are a C cup, you need to wear a half bra. C cup and up. They got half bras. TJ Maxx had half bras for like, what is it? $7.99. I bought me another one. Like, we got to do better, women. And men. I don't want to see your pants on the ground. I don't want to see your skin mark on your boxer briefs. Your boxer briefs should be clean. You get a pack from a 99 cent variety store. I know in New York, they got a lot of little variety stores we could get your drawers from. If you packing over here, you can get some good pack of drawers. I know men clothes are expensive, but come on, we, we got to do better with the clothing. I know people are laughing, but this is a serious thing because people don't know how to dress appropriately. I was raised by an old school Southern belle. I was raised in New York, but my mother's from down South. So she always taught me how to dress. And I always look effortlessly in my clothes. See my pictures. You can tell. I'll be snatched for the gods. But yes, Let's all dress appropriate and let's all wear our masks. Continue to social distance and wash your damn hands. But until then, you all, you have a good night.